Frequency separation is the technique for cleaning up your images in photo editing software. But there are some technical concepts that confuse beginners. Today I'll show you what all these concepts mean from the ground up and we'll look at a full example of frequency separation. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent and today we're talking about frequency separation in Affinity Photo. Frequency separation is a technique that's used in lots of photo editing software, but today we'll be looking at it from Affinity Photo's perspective. Now, instead of just making a quick five minute video that tells you what buttons to click, I really wanna have you understand these concepts from the ground up. The reason is that these concepts apply to several different things in Affinity Photo. The most obvious one is the filters frequency separation, the title of this video. But you'll also see it in the live masks here with the band pass mask. And in the live filters here, we also have our high pass filter. And I'm sure there's other areas of Affinity Photo where these concepts could be useful. So this will be a more advanced video, but I'm hoping that this explanation will help you actually understand what it is you're actually doing with these tools. And if words like frequency, high pass filter, band pass filters confuse you, don't worry, we'll cover all of them by the end of this video. So first let's talk about what problem are we actually trying to solve? Now there are a couple of different reasons we'd wanna use frequency separation, but let me give you one example here with this image. Now a common thing we wanna do with images like this is enhance detail in the detailed areas and reduce noise in the low detail areas. So if I zoom into the low detail areas, you can see lots of noise here, all these little random bits of red and blue and green. Now a great way to get rid of this type of noise is to add a blur filter. So let me add a blur filter here. So I'll say Gaussian blur and I'll blur it. And it does a pretty good job of smoothing it out. Now the problem of course is when I zoom out, in my highly detailed areas, I've lost a lot of that detail. So the process of reducing noise in the low detail areas is counterproductive to the high detail areas. Let me turn off that blur filter. From the other perspective, we often want to sharpen areas of detail. So let's add a sharpen filter there. I'll add an unsharp mask. And I'll just increase it really drastically so you can see an effect. So we've got some nice sharpening there. But now we have the opposite problem, which is that we've added noise to the low detail areas. So let's look in the low detail area. You can see it's even noisier than it was before. So this is before, after. We've actually added more noise there. So there's no one size fits all option for reducing noise and increasing detail. There are two operations that are at odds with each other. And it doesn't just happen for images like this. It's very common to run into this problem, especially with portrait photography, which we'll look at at the end of this video. So this is the inherent problem we're trying to solve with frequency separation. How do we edit our high detail areas and low detail areas separately? So let's start by thinking about how we can find highly detailed areas. And we can do that with a process called edge detection. So here I have this image here and edge detection in Affinity Photo is a destructive process. So I'm just gonna control J on my layer here and that duplicates it. So I'll call this original, and I'll call this edge detection. And the way we can run edge detection in Affinity Photo is by selecting filters, detect, and then you can just choose detect edges. There are a couple options, but this one's the basic one. And if I click this, you'll see that now I have an outline of all the shapes in my image. So this was before, after, before, after. Now it's very interesting if we consider these shapes. For example, these were different shapes here with different colors. And it didn't really care about the colors too much, but it just found the outlines of them. It even worked for the words up here. This checkerboard was kind of an interesting situation. You can see what it looked like originally. And it literally found the edges of all the squares and also some of the borders here. It got both sides of them. Now this may look like some fancy modern AI, but this is really one of the oldest algorithms in all of image processing. And it's pretty helpful to understand on a basic level how it works. If we zoom into our shapes a lot, I've turned on the pixel grid. And the way it works is you can see the different pixels here. Let's go to an area that's all the same. Now all this algorithm really does is it looks at a pixel's value and then it calculates the average value of the pixels around it and then it subtracts those two values. Now if those pixels are all the same, the result is zero and we get black. So if I zoom out of my image here, if I turn on the edge detection, the areas where the color is all the same are black because you have that pixel being subtracted from the average values around it, which are all the same, so you get zero. Now the interesting thing happens is when we get close to an edge. So if we zoom in here, so let's say we have a pixel here, this pixel is gonna be different than the value of the pixels around it. So when you take that difference, you're gonna get some non-zero number. And we can just take the absolute value of that and then we get our edge. And that's how we get our edges here. The value of all these pixels are different than the average value of the pixels all around them. Okay, now let's run edge detection on a more realistic image. So let me duplicate it again, Control J. And let's run it again. Filters, detect, detect edges. So we can see the results are very interesting in this case. 
For one thing, it's very clear that edge detection picks up details really well. So if I zoom into the tree line here, we can see the edge detection picked up all the trees. So this is what it looked like originally. And then with edge detection, we get all the outlines of the trees here. Now the field is a very highly detailed area. So let me turn on the edge detection for there. If we zoom into the field, we can see lots of things happening. So edge detection is really a way of picking up high detailed areas. Now one thing you may have noticed is that the sun virtually disappeared. So this was the sun. Let's zoom in. We have the sun here. With the edge detection on, it's basically gone. And you can kind of see why it vanishes. There's no real sharp edge to the sun. It's very soft. So when we have the edge detection, it kind of goes away for the most part. So edge detection is really a powerful method for identifying those high detailed areas. Let's now look at how we find low detail areas. So how can we enhance low detail areas of our image? And when I say enhance low details, what I mean is if I zoom in here, you can see all this noise. How do we get rid of that type of thing? Well, as I showed you at the beginning of the video, we can use a blur filter. So I'll select the live filters here. And I'll select Gaussian blur. Now, if I zoom into the sky here, we can see there's all these different little pixel colors. Let me increase the radius of my blur filter. And I can get a nice smoothing effect here. So that actually looks pretty good. So now I'll zoom out. And of course you can see it's all blurry now. And all the details down here in the grass are gone. So this blur filter has really enhanced the low details of our image. We're just getting the big blocks of color and shapes. Now so far I've been talking in terms of detail, but we've heard this word frequency before. So how do these things relate? Well, essentially you can think of frequency and detail as being the same thing. When you hear someone talk about low frequency parts of an image, they're talking about the low detail areas. And when someone talks about the high frequency parts of an image, they're talking about the high detail areas. So in this example here, you can see a lot of the sky is low frequency. Maybe even some of the subtle parts of the clouds over here are low frequency as well. On the other hand, the buildings are very high frequency. Lots of changes happening as you go up and down them. Now it may seem strange to use this word frequency for images because usually we think of frequency related to sound or some other type of wave. But really this comes from a signal background and you can think of an image as having frequencies of values of light and dark. So on the left here, we have a low frequency image and on the right, we have a high frequency image. So you can think of frequency as the jump in value between two pixels. So for example, let me draw a line across this image here. All the white here is one frequency. If we go up to gray, that's a little bit of a higher frequency. And then we go back down to white. So we're just kind of going steady here. I'm trying to hold steady. Now we have a little bit more gray, maybe it goes up a little bit, down a little bit, and we're steady again. Up a little bit, down a little bit. Steady for a long period. This one's dark, so maybe we go up a little bit there, down. And this is our low frequency image. Now let's look at the high frequency image. So our frequency is pretty steady. Now we have a drastic jump in black. And then we go drastically down to white again. A less drastic jump to black, down. Another big jump in black, stay the same, up again, up again, hold the same through the white, another big black jump, down, and then we finish with the white again. So this is really the concept of where frequency comes into play. And you can see over here, the high frequency areas are definitely sharp edges. And over here on the low frequency side, the changes are very subtle and shallow. Now I just did this in one dimension going left to right, but of course in a two dimensional image, you can also think of the frequency as going up and down as well. So now at this point, we basically have the tools to understand all the terminology in front of us. We often see this term bandpass filter, whether it's high bandpass filter or low bandpass filter. When we say bandpass, we just mean what frequency is allowed to pass through. So if you have a high bandpass filter, that allows you to pass high frequencies through. And an example of this is edge detection. With a low bandpass filter, this is allowing you to pass low frequencies through it. And this would be a blur filter. So when you see these terms bandpass filters, they're either talking about the low frequency filters or high frequency filters. And as we said, low frequency is going to be the blurry big areas of color. And the high frequency is going to be these edges that we usually see with edge detection. Okay, so finally we can apply these ideas to a real life demonstration. So here we have a portrait that we can do touch up work on and we know the scope of the problem we wanna address. We wanna separate our highly detailed areas from our low detailed areas and edit them separately. So frequency separation is a destructive operation in Affinity Photo. So I'll duplicate the layer again. I'll click Control J. So I have my original layer on the bottom. On top I'll just call this frequency separation. It doesn't matter because it's gonna change anyway. So with this top layer selected, I'll go to Filters, 
and then frequency separation. And then you're going to get this tool here. And what you notice is it's split into two halves. And down at the bottom, they're labeled here. On the left, we have high frequency. And on the right, we have low frequency. And if you look at each side, it matches what we've talked about so far. The left is high frequency, and you can see it's finding the edges. And the right side is low frequency, and it's blurry. If I increase the radius here, you can see the effect more strongly. Now, there's a couple of different methods here, but for this video, I'm just going to be using the Gaussian method. That's the simplest. Now, the big question is, where do you want this slider to be? And the answer is that you basically want it to be at a place where you just start to see details on the left that represent what you want to get rid of. So let me drag this out a little more. The left still seems a little bit too strong. Let me decrease a little bit more. I can start to see little areas here that I might want to remove. So I think six pixels is pretty good for this. So I'm going to click Apply. And what happens is it separates my image into two parts, the high frequency part and the low frequency part. Now, right now, you don't actually notice any difference. If I select the high frequency and low frequency, if I hide them, you can see it looks exactly the same as the layer below it. My original layer is showing here. If I turn on high frequency and low frequency together, there is no change, and that's intentional. But if we look at the layers by themselves, let me just view high frequency. This is the high frequency layer. And if I look at the low frequency, this is the low frequency layer. It's blurrier than our original image. So let me turn on high frequency. Now, one important thing to note is that high frequency has the linear light blend mode set to it. So when the high frequency mode is on and it's set to linear light, if we turn on the low frequency blurred layer below it, it looks like our original image. So that's something to be aware of. So what do we actually want to do now to work with our image? Well, if we edit the high frequency layer, that's going to be really good at getting rid of details that we want removed. If we edit the low frequency layer, on the other hand, that's going to allow us to recolor areas. So let's start with the high frequency layer and let's remove some details from this image. Now, when editing photos like this, it's always kind of a personal decision on what changes you want to make. I'm just going to make changes to kind of show you what's possible. And of course, in your own photos, you can decide how you want to go about it. So with the high frequency layer selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my inpainting brush tool and I'm going to make sure it's set to current layer. And what you typically want is your brush to be fairly small. You don't want it to be too big, just big enough to cover the areas that you want to get rid of. So let's zoom in here. Maybe I just want to remove some of these marks here. So I'll just select little areas that I want to get rid of. Again, it's going to be up to you how much detail you want to get rid of. I'll change some of this just to show you kind of the differences here. Maybe I want to fix the glasses here. I'll do that. So we can see I removed the detail there. Maybe in the eyes, I want to do some cleanup. I just want it to be a little more white. Get rid of some of the detail in the eyes. Maybe some marks down here I want to get rid of. So we've made some changes, but there's some other things that I'm not seeing in the high frequency layer. For example, if we go in here, there's some marks around here and on the chin. If I go to my high frequency layer, I'm actually not seeing them. And that's because these are in the low frequency layer. So let's look at how to edit the low frequency layer now. So I'll turn off the high frequency. And I'll go to low frequency. Now on the low frequency layer, I recommend selecting a paintbrush. So I'll go back to my paintbrush over here. And you're going to want something that's really smooth, like one of the basic soft round brushes. You're definitely going to have a pretty low flow, so I don't know, something around 10% or lower. And I make sure I'm on my low frequency layer. So here we have a mark. Let's see how we can get rid of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press Alt, and I'm going to click on the area around it. And that's going to change my color up here. So pressing Alt and clicking will automatically fill your brush with whatever color is under your cursor. So I'm going to pick some color around here. Alt, click there. And let's smooth out this area. You're going to want to pick from a couple different areas so it blends together. So if I turn on the high frequency, you can see that red is gone. Now, what's really interesting is if we compare it to the original. So let me turn off my high and low frequency. So that's what it originally looked like. And this is the touch-up work. Now, what's so interesting is notice how all the little details are still there. Before, after, before, after. So we're able to really isolate the color and not destroy the details. Let's do the same thing with the lips over here. So I'll go back to my low frequency layer. I'll Alt-click to pick some of this color. Let's paint in here. Do this area. Clean up some of there. Let's get some up here. So let's compare this with the before and after. So this is before, after, before, after. And notice how all these details are still in there perfectly. Here's an area maybe I want to clean up a little bit. So here you can see the result of our touch-ups. Before, after, before, after. And again, the thing that's really powerful about it is in areas like this, being able to change color without losing that detail. So there's many other use cases for frequency separation, and this was just one example. 
I hope this video has given you the knowledge to experiment with your own images and see what kind of interesting results you can get. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.